again, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a Stanley Baker triple bill, all within the kind of crime genre or working class genre. So I'm going to look at three films over a decade they made. There's Hell Drivers, directed by Silent Field. We've got um, The Criminal, directed by Joseph Losey. And we've got um, Robbery, directed by Peter Yates. Now, The Criminal is going to be, there's going to be a video on The Criminal by Solitary One, who do a podcast with later on, and his channel. We both <laughs> went to this direction at the same time and didn't realise until we, he, he announced this low safe series. I was like, I'm doing a low safe film too. Oh, But he watched both videos. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, uh, it's just the way it goes sometimes. You just... Uh, you just plan things and realise other people are doing them. It just happens once in a while. So there we go. Um, so, um, Stanley Baker was an actor f who operated post World War II up to like, the mid 70s, then he died of lung cancer. He was also a producer. He produced um, a Robbery, as well as been the star of it. Um, so he developed some of his own work. He was in a lot of good films. He was in some bad films too. He he worked a lot to support his production company, and uh, some people we criticise him for being uh, after his career went on a bit for being more produced than, than an actor at a certain point. Because early on he was so identified as these these great performances that um, people thought it was a bit a little bit more lacking when he was trying to concentrate producing stuff too. But then again, he's a working actor. I mean, he worked on a lot of stuff through the years that we don't look back on at all now because of a supporting part, or so maybe the film wasn't that good. It's just, uh, just the way it's a working actor thing. You're in good stuff, you're in bad stuff. You remember the good stuff. The bad stuff tends to be forgotten. So there we go. He even did some Italian films in the 70s for money. So uh, but I'm not covering them. I'm covering these three films. They're all good films. So... The first one's Hell Drivers, which was a film that put him on the map. This is a first real big success. Even though it was, was not a massive hit, this is a success. It was a modern success, and it told everybody he could carry a film. He'd been doing supporting parts in American films, and he'd been doing villain parts in British films. This is his first like, proper lead to where he showed he could carry the film. It was... Um, it led to more films say Enfield, including the biggest success, which was Zulu, and in the mid sixties. But this was the mid to late fifties, and this was the first collaboration. And the interesting thing about Hell Drivers is the cast. The, it's got an amazing cast of people who are about to explode in the British film industry in the sixties that weren't there yet. So you would Patrick McGoon as a villain. You know, this is before the prisoner, so he's he walks away with the film. He's astonishing. He manages to be. He's that thing that Gary Oldman managed to do in Leon, where he's completely over the top, but really fascinating and really high, but also weird little details in there as well, which makes the performance really interesting. You've got a young Sean Connery as uh, one of the people who are working. As, as one of the drivers. This is well before Bond. This was a three or four years before Bond. And he looks quite a bit younger and rougher. Like he hadn't gone through the um, polish they had to do for Bond. You've got young Gordon Jackson at the same time. Who had been in a lot of big films in the 60s and TV in the 70s. You know, you have a William Hartnell before he became Doctor Who. So in this film you've got Doctor Who, the first Doctor Who and the first uh, James Bond. Uh, you, you a young Sid James or a youngish Sid James, one of the other drivers. You have him, him at Lorne as an Italian. See, so he, he's got an amazing cast, and everybody's good. But young David McCallum is Baker's brother, younger brother who's been injured in the past. No, so so basically the thing is, Baker plays this guy who was an ex-criminal. He went to jail for something, and there's never completely figured out but the idea he was a criminal. He get caught and he's trying to go straight. But the film knows that can be cliched as a as a story. So they keep it back as much as they can and let you fill in so much yourself. 
and they let Baker be the kind of guy who's keeping everything to himself so that it's more interesting. It's just like, they don't quite see it for a long time. He's like, he used to be a criminal. They said he was away, but you know it was a criminal past. You know he's using a fake ID to get a job on this drive thing because he's a driver who, working for this company who has to get back and forward to the pits to the location of the building's houses very quickly and have to do driving that's very dangerous. So you need top class drivers and you've got all these actors who are playing the drivers who are all... You get kind of macho fuel from them. You get kind of thinking these are the these are the kind of troublemakers in any society. These are the guys who are always in trouble. You know they're doing this job, but they could be in jail quite easily. They're the people who just can't help themselves. They're really a little bit too much energy. So even when they go to a cafe to hang out with each other, there's like a competitiveness to each other as well that's always there. But they are a gang, and they're all trying to beat Red, played by Patrick McGoon, who's the the pit boss, basically. He's a guy who's the fastest driver. He's a guy who sets the speed and everyone has to follow. And he's a guy that, Mag that uh, Magoon's a guy who's just a bit crazy. And he's always putting everyone in the place and making sure everyone knows who their who the boss is and who the best person to drive is. Everyone's trying to beat his record. But no one can. Until Baker arrives. And Baker's the one guy who Thinks, I can take this guy. I can really take this guy. And he's competitive as well. I mean, he fits in perfectly with his group. Because he's a bit crazy too. Which means that you... The character's more interesting. Maybe a little bit less likeable for some people. But more interesting. Because he's not that sympathetic. He's... He, compared to McGoon, he's sympathetic. But he's really just a guy trying to get over his past. And he's brusque with people. And he's trying to do the right thing. He's trying to be loyal to his friend, even though his friend's girlfriend has eye for him. Which again could be really cliched. It is the most cliched part of the, the, the story. It's a bit you can lose quite easily. But it kind of works because the player, like, he knows it's dangerous and he actually... It's just written well, written more realistically than most versions of that story could have been written. Because it's just like, yeah, this is a problem which can happen. And there's no, like easy way out of it. It's not, it's a tangled situation. It's, there's no real solution. So that kind of thing really works. The whole film really works because it's a sense of the working class and how dangerous this is and how no one wants to ask questions. This is how things get done in society. People in the lower working classes have to do these dangerous jobs and some people might get injured and we're going to look the other way. We don't, we don't want to cause fun. We don't want to look into this. Especially as you, as you go further on, you realise there's criminality involved because there's contracts, means the people are getting underpaid for the work and they shouldn't be doing these crazy stuff because they, they're getting paid enough to have more drivers so there would be, still be enough people doing the runs. But, but it's, a, it's a really interesting take on like 50s life and how everything wasn't perfect and how people had to like do shortcuts and people were greedy. And it was just like a toughness that he had to do to survive in this time period. You know, it was unsentimental. It was a time where there were very macho characters who were quite dangerous. There's a scene where they go to this um, function at the local um, community centre. It's a dance. And everyone else is polite and these guys are just lunatics at the corner who are, who are creating, creating a fight because... They can quite adjust to civilian life and all these kind of soft people who are getting paid better than them, who have an easier life than them, you know. And the resentment just comes out. And Baker is in trouble there because he, to avoid because he's a criminal record, he doesn't want to get in a fight. He avoids the fight. And they call him yellow. His, his teammates call him yellow. And he's shunned for a while because of that, which, caused, which leads to the conclusion where it's based on McGoon versus Baker. It's a really good film. It's a really good film, and um, it's much better than the plot description would suggest. I mean, the idea of just these drivers driving really fast and being in competition with each other, you think, oh, I've seen that before. That's so TV. But the way it's done, the attention to detail, the way they, all the characters are interesting, 
and the details of how their lives have been lived at that time just really works. It is an action movie, but the action's about trying to avoid crashing around crashing. So it's a very enjoyable film. It's highly recommended. You can get it in network, um, Blue Ridge Tributors, quite cheaply. Next up is The Criminal, which is the one that Stanley Beacon maybe Joseph Losey. That led to Eve after that as well. So Losey at that point was uh, blacklisted. He had been working under assumed names <laughs> as well. And he had a hard time. And now he was back under his own name and he was making films. But he was starting to get a reputation again as being a good director. But he was working a lot of films with minimal pay. He was not getting paid a fortune for these films. He was um, trying to do the best he could under circumstances. So he was being underpaid for films with not the highest budgets, but he was doing good jobs on them, and he was like he would get a reputation where it would not soon after this we'd meet the servant and he basically they'll be delivered as a art house director again, so where he could actually get more money for his film. But this was still early on. We had been doing some Hammer films, like not the not the horror one. But he was doing it like the um, Hammer used to do horror films, but also do these like um, dramas as well, like uh, Camp Blood Island and things. And he did the Damned for them, and because he's a good director, and he did that some scenes of X the Unknown before he was fired because of the lead actor being an anti-communist. <laughs> um, so. But by the time we got to Criminal, it was a situation where Jimmy Sangster, who worked for Hammer a lot, had written an outline for another producer, a criminal one, an idea of a crime story. It was offered to Losey and um, Stanley Baker individually, but they got together and said, this is the most cliched thing we've ever seen. We'll make it as long as Big Brain, but we'll write it in. He can rewrite the whole thing. The plot will stay, but we'll do all the character details. And that's the film really works. Now, the film was cut down from over two hours to 140, one hour, 40 minutes. And you can feel the damage in the film. It's, 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 it's a, the biggest flaw in the film. And this is a wonderful film, as it feels too short. It feels, he has to do feel something's been cut out of it and it makes the film feel longer because it's too short. It's just that sense of in the film, it does feel like there's something that's, that should be there that's not there. Because certain scenes have been, have, been, have been built towards making a point and then the you can go into the next bit and go into the next bit and it also feels there's, there's scenes in there that would have actually helped make the dramatic points clearer. And have more impact in certain scenes. Like the love story felt like you needed another couple of scenes just to solidify it. And a bunch of other, just some crime scenes of criminal workings felt like you needed more time with them as well. Everything always felt like a lot of the conspiracy stuff involved in the second half felt like they needed more time. It just felt like it was a film was longer that was cut down. And that's kind of the biggest flaw in it is just like. When I left the film, I thought, that's a really good film, but it does feel like there's certain things are missing that you need. It's like, they're probably there, because when I read up earlier on, it had been cut down, it's like, yep, that's probably what happened. Is that, because it seemed like the film was too well made to miss this stuff. So it feels, it does feel like a producer has come in and cut bits out that you should have had. And it's, it's something producers used to do a lot in the 60s and the 70s, where it was like, Oh, this film's too long, let's cut it down a bit. And you end up cutting out the bits that you need to have a dramatic and emotional reaction to. Because this is a film about a criminal. Baker was very good at playing characters who might not be likeable on the surface, but you find some admirable qualities about them. And this was one of those kind of films. And he plays a guy who's getting out of jail, who we see early on is the big guy in the prison. He's a guy you don't mess with in the prison. He's got his um, own people beside him who will be loyal to him. And it starts off with him shaming somebody who has done something. We don't know what he's done. 
but this guy is, he arranged this guy could be not, but he has nothing to do with it, officially. They can't, can't prove, they can't do it that will affect his parole, but he will, he will arrange for this thing, this guy to get taken down, even though he's not killed, he's just like beaten up a little bit. Then he's at a prison and you see his life, and you see him dealing with these new gangsters coming around to his place. So there's like the surprise return party for him with all these gangsters around him and he's got a next girlfriend who's not in good he, he's not getting on with well. He throws her out and he falls this other girl this other woman who initially suspicious of but they do connect, they do have a certain thing about them. And Baker plays this guy who is vain, he is you know he thinks too much of himself. He really is a bit rough around the edges. But he is a gangster. He's, he's portraying this guy as what he is. He's a gangster. He robs places. He makes money that way. He plans things out very carefully. And he makes his money doing that. Like, he's a criminal. They never try and say he's not a criminal. Everyone knows he's a criminal. And when he leaves jail, it's like, we'll be back soon. Says, you know, it's like, of course, that's when your job's a criminal. You're going to fail eventually. And it's like he knows that. But as the, fil as the film starts to progress, you realise there's a new breed of criminal in that he, they don't like him. They don't like his way of doing things because they are much more corporate. And uh, sort of by Sam Wanamaker as the American guy who's... There's a middleman between him and the big guy who has connections all over in jail and the, the crime world and he's taking a bigger car and he's taking a more brutal cut with different people and Baker does not like that. Baker does not like this guy who's always chilling him in his area. He doesn't like the guy who's trying to eat more than he should because when they steal the money they have to pass it through someone to get it laundered so it's not that money. So if someone grabs catches them with the money they can say well is that the same money that they was stolen? He's like uh, no. So well how can you so it's that thing they have to put through just to launder a little bit. And this guy does that, but this guy's now actually trying to go for a bigger cut because he's, oh, it's a bit more dangerous now, but he's really just trying to power through. And the whole film is about this, this more corporatised crime syndicate trying to take over. And they don't like Baker. They do not like him. He's too independent. So it's very much, the, the, the setup similar to like Point Blank, it was made later, where they have a corporatised crime syndicate now and the individual who's going to smash them up, they don't understand. It's like, what's going on? Why, why are you so annoyed? And this one, they're about to get the guy who's an individual because it's like, we don't like your way of doing things and you will not bow down to us in our more supposedly civilised ways. So you have, a, you have a robbery that goes well. They get through it quite quickly. They hide the money. And then Baker makes one little mistake that gets him caught. And that's when they start to put screws on him, try and find the money. Because they want the money. They're pissed off that he is not going to deal with them the way they want to be dealt with. And it's a, it becomes a story about how the screws can be put on him to make him suffer. And it's really wonderful how he's done it. Because it's all character based. It's all like a little thing that will bug him. It's a bit showed you how corrupt the... The prison service can be because it's, they've all been paid off by different people. It's how corrupt the criminal world is because the criminal world, of course, is corrupt. But how corrupt the civilized world is tied to it, and how once they've got their eye on you as being being uh, their enemy, they will mess you up. They will really mess you up. So it's a wonderful film. Great performances. You have Patrick McGee as the prison warden who's very corrupt. You have a baker as the lead. You have a bunch of faces you'll recognise in the prison. Even if you can't figure out the, the names, you recognise some of the faces. And it's just one of those really good films. It's just really well made. It's very spare. You've, you've got uh, like Nigel Green as one of the criminals from outside, which is terrific. There's some wonderful stuff. There's a couple of plot mechanics towards the end that are a bit dodgy and it's like and that's probably what I complain about with the original outline <laughs> but it still works though because you can get over that pretty quickly it's got a terrific ending 
that's absurd and blackly comic. And it's just a wonderful film. It's just trimming longer. It just feels like it's been cut down below what it should be. But there's so many scenes upon scenes of great scenes working well that it doesn't matter that there's a couple of things you feel are missing. It's still a wonderful film. So I highly recommend The Criminal. Again, I'm trying to avoid... Try to give you a general idea of what it is without seeing every scene that happens. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that happens I haven't talked about. <laughs> but it's definitely worth seeing. Criminal is wonderful. Finally, we have Robbery, which is based on the great train ro the train robbery of the, in the 60s. Almost got that confused with the Sean Connery film there. <laughs> Very early with titles. Um, but it's a train robbery from the 60s. This is a dramatisation of it. Made not long after it, taking into account of all the stuff that happened, they had to fictionalise some of the people just for legal reasons. But it really is about like how did they get the seed money for the job? How did the job go ahead? How did some people escape? How did a lot get caught? Get caught? And it's just all about that the criminal world and the court will try to focus on them. I mean, the first two films in this. I've covered a black and white. This is a colour film. Baker was a producer, and apparently a very tough producer. Peter Yates did this film, and he, he got bullet right after it because of the car chase at the beginning of the film, and impressed everybody. So, so this film is his calling card to Hollywood, basically. But it's still a very good film. It's probably the least of the three these films I've covered. It's probably the weakest, but it's still a four star film. It's still really good. It's its problem is just basically is. It's so loyal to the story that by the time when they do the robbery, it becomes a bit more predictable of what's going to happen because of the following facts. That's just, that's just the limitations of doing a true crime drama sometimes. But the first section is something that did not happen in real life. They changed it because they wanted a car chase because it was like, how do they get seed money for this crime? It's a, it's a, a robbery organised by Baker who you don't see in this first sequence, but you see his men as they do this crime. It goes wrong, and they have to do a car chase to escape. And it's a great car chase. It's crazy. It goes through London, has to avoid different people, and it's... And you see, you see, you see their getaway drive. You see the different people who are... And you see how... Fo who, who, you see the individual characters in, in, under, under stress, and you see how, how common the police are how much of a tough getaway it actually is. So, but half an hour in, you've had a great car chase, you've got interest in these characters, and you know they're planning a big score. And you're seeing things go wrong for them, because the police are onto them, so they have to be careful. And it's about the criminal enterprise trying to do the Great Train Robbery, or the Train Robbery. But it's called the Great Train Robbery in Britain, <laughs> so it's confusing. And it's based about them doing it, and it's... So it does have a thing that Heat would have years later, which is, you see it from the point of view of the criminals and the cops, and the criminal world is fascinating and multi-layered and difficult. You're dealing with people who have to negotiate the services of certain people for certain parts of the job, and you may not like them, but you have to deal with them because it's a job and you're a professional and this is it done at this time for this job to work, and it's all about the plan of the job an execution of the job and how they're going to do their getaway and how they plan their getaway and it's very complicated. And all that detail is great. And the, the, after, the aftermath of how mistakes were made and got a lot of people caught are also very interesting. But it's less interesting than the setup, which is kind of the problem is there's someone you see you think, oh, you're going to mess it up. And he does. And it's like, there's those moments of predictability. And I think sometimes it was a bit of casting of someone just seemed too incompetent. So like, why did you go to him? And he messes a lot of stuff up and it's like, you went broad when you should have gone quiet for this character. And it's a lot of things like that happen in the film. But generally it's very good. Baker's terrific as a lead guy, the lead planner. who's always one step ahead of everyone else. All the guys around him faces you you can know a little bit from TV. You know, you may not know the names, but you know the faces. They crop out on TV throughout the 70s. 
and the 80s. So there were people who you would not recognise on TV. And if you're a certain age. And you've just got lots and lots of um, interest and little moments. Interest in little crime things. It's less personality based than the other two films. There's less character stuff in this one. Because it is a bit of crime more than the characters. And the first two films is a bit of characters... Actions creating the drama, and this one is they want something, I'm gonna go get it. And the character stuff is filled in, and everyone's interested. You get like Baker and his, his wife, and their dysfunction. You get all these other characters and the details, but it's all going towards this robbery, and the robbery is more important than the characters. So, it means in the second half, when things have gone a bit more wrong, you're less invested because you don't know the characters as well as you do in the first two films. But it's still a very good film. And well put together, very enjoyable. It's a crime movie that knows it's a crime movie and doesn't try and do anything different. It's like, we're doing a crime movie. If you like a crime movie, you're going to enjoy this. If you don't like crime movies and you watch this one, you might not like it. But if you have any crime movies, you're probably going to like this one because it's it feels authentic to a lot of the weird qualities of that era and very macho elements. They're very focused on getting the job done, like be professional. And deal with people you don't like and just keep working. It's like, they treat the job as a job. It's like, with this stuff to do from here, go here, do this thing, pick up a job. Go here, do the next part of the job. And just keep doing these things you need to do to get this thing to work. And how they hide from the police is very inventive. Because they don't go on the run, they do something different, which is quite inventive. And based on what actually happened. So it's a, it's a very good film. All three of these films are very good. They're all very enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed this video and you can maybe get into some of the Stanley Baker films because there are a lot of good stuff. I mean, he was the, the Sean Cronin before Sean Connery, basically. He was a guy who had the, the career Sean Connery had and people thought Baker was going to have. And Connery came born and he had that career instead. It's just that kind of thing. So, um, go see the films. They're all readily available. The robbery is also available on Network Blu-ray. So it's easy to find. You get some good extras on it. Criminal is in uh is also in blue for different distributor, but they're all available to see, so go watch them. Right, that's me for now. Right, bye. <laughs>